Last year, I burst into spring ready to run and then walked out of summer injured and sidelined. My body had broken down and I didn't know why. Shin splints, a groin strain, and sore hamstrings had me puzzled. Upon further research, my mistakes with training volume, intensity, and ignoring previous injuries did it. And I never really came into running with a plan to begin with. I was just trying to go out there and do more today than I did yesterday, and that didn't work. That's not what smart runners do, and that's not what elite athletes do, but I didn't know any better. This year, I've spent most of March researching running programming and progression, and I've now laid out my entire running planning through the year based upon my VDOT value to correct from previous mistakes last year. So what is VDOT? How can you determine your value? And how have I used this to plan out my entire year's worth of runs? Well, let's get into it. Jack Daniels, who wrote the Daniels Running Formula, created the VDOT running program. And he defines VDOT as your estimated VO2 max while taking into consideration running economy and oxygen utilization. Simply put, VDOT is your current level of running fitness. The higher your VDOT, the fitter you are. But it also is used to determine your running pacing or training intensity throughout the program. To determine your VDOT, Daniels recommends using a recent race performance, and preferably a race that's closely aligned with what your running goals are. For example, if you're training for a marathon, then a recent half marathon race would be a better determinant of your VDOT than a recent one mile race. Personally, I'm planning on training and racing in a few 5Ks throughout the year, so I'll use my recent 20 minute 5K race performance. From there, I'll use Daniel's provided VDOT chart to determine my value, and we can see that my VDOT is at 50. This value can now be used to determine the intensity or pacing of my various runs. But first, there are five important training paces to become aware of within this program. Easy pace. These are runs performed at about 65 to 79% of your maximum heart rate, and they should be easy. You should be able to run these while able to hold a conversation with a little discomfort. They're designed to train your heart and fat burning energy systems, and they should make up a majority of miles throughout your week, and each run should be between 30 and say 150 minutes. Marathon pace. These runs are performed at 80 to 89% of your maximum heart rate, and they're designed to give you confidence your ability to run at that pace for extended periods of time. They're meant to prep you for a marathon, which is not relevant for me. Threshold pace. These runs are performed at 88 to 92% of your maximum heart rate, and they are tougher. You will be slightly winded afterwards. They're designed to improve your lactate clearance and improve your endurance, and they should be performed for a maximum of about 20 minutes and have a 5 to 1 work to rest ratio. Interval pace. These are runs performed at near maximum heart rate, and they're designed to increase your VO2 max. And so you're only going to be performing these runs for a maximum of 5 minutes and utilizing a 1 to 1 work to rest ratio. And last we have repeat pace. These are near sprints designed to improve your speed, power, and running economy. Most repeats are performed in under two minutes and utilize a one to two to three work to rest ratio, and they make up the least of your training plan. So now that I know my VDOT value of 50 and I understand the various training paces, I can now use another chart that Daniels provides to determine my exact training paces. With a VDOT value of 50, I can see that my easy run should be performed at about an 814 minute mile, and then my threshold runs at a 415 per kilometer pace, and so on. And this has been a blessing for me when trying to determine run intensity, because previously last year when I was coming into issues, I never knew how hard to be running my hard runs, I never knew how easy to run my easy runs. I was always questioning what I was doing, and now I at least have a structured plan to follow. And lastly, I picked one of Daniel's running plans to begin my work. Daniel's offers four different running plans for beginners, intermediates, advanced, and elites. Each one of these four plans has four different phases to it, phase one, two, three, four. And each one of these phases has four weeks of training. So I decided to start off with his intermediate plan, phase one of the intermediate plan. So here you can see my first four weeks of training in that phase one of the intermediate plan. And I'm a couple weeks into it already, and I'm loving it. And the other thing I struggled with last year was determining the proper training progression and frequency. I didn't have a firm grasp on how many miles I should be increasing per week of running. I didn't know how many hard versus easy runs I should be performing per week. And I didn't know how much rest I should be getting to prevent injury and keep the progression moving. With this plan, I have a much better idea of a structure that I'm going to follow for months to come. I should note that I am using day two and day six of this plan for cross training. I recently got a rowing machine back in February and I'll put a post on it soon, but yeah, that's pretty cool. So day two and day six, I'll just perform 30 minutes of easy rowing. 
And then on day four, I do run and I repeat the day one workout as suggested. So with those changes in mind, here's what my schedule has been like for the past two weeks and the upcoming two weeks to finish out phase one of the intermediate plan. So here are my final thoughts. I can't tell you how excited I am to have a structured running plan to go off of that allows me to progress safely, but also with a focus on increasing performance. And barring any injury or unforeseen circumstances, I don't see why I can't complete all four phases of the intermediate plan by, say, the end of July, and then move on to the advanced plan after that. I have three 5K races that I'm planning on doing in May, July, and October, so I'll use that to gauge my progress and update my VDOT value, which will then update my training paces along the way. I have no idea what I'll be able to accomplish this year in the 5K, but I know I'm starting out at about 20 minutes, and I think it's possible to be below 18 minutes by the end of the year, but we'll just have to see. Not only have I revamped my running routine this year, but I've also increased my lifting volume. I've updated my stretching routine and then I've added breath work to it as well. So a lot of things coming, a lot that I'm excited to share with you guys. I'm just doing whatever I can to drop this 5K time and I am just excited about it. Can't wait. Thanks for stopping by and I'm hoping I'll be here again next week. I also have a weekly newsletter that has the three most important things that I've read, watched, or listened to within the past week. There's a link down in the description if you're interested in that. Thanks again, and uh, see you guys later.